<clears throat> uh, before we get started with today's session, um, due to events that have happened outside of the campaign, the person behind the player character of Li of Lion will no longer be present in the campaign going forward. And with that, we will continue as normal. So, last session. We last gathered. Our familiar feathered red chocobo friend by the name of Xander told him so told the party who he was. He relayed some very useful and heart attack inducing information to the rest. Mm. He also explained to the party that there was a particular flower that was left behind by a knot that allowed them to attain further levels of strength that will inevitably aid them on their quest. And once Xander did his role, he took his leave, though he did strike up a deal with the party. Afterwards, there was a bit of downtime to where the party laughed, talked. Uh, Yashu and Cynthia, they bonded a little bit, made some food with each other. And then, once the rest of the team came back, the rest of the team being Zero, Rita, Frankie, and Rosalia, when they all traded information, then a battle plan, battle strategy was concocted. It will be going into effect very, very soon, but with the remaining downtime that is left, uh, Yashua decided to go on a small stroll in the city. And from there, our campaign and our story will continue. Let me just place the player token on the correct area. I'll toggle the music. And we will begin. Very important thing. If you're eating spicy chips, don't scratch your eyes. Yes, that is important. Oh my god, my eye. <laughs> I'm good though. Alright, so... Since my character already... got to see the map... And, um, Zero also showed us, like, the map before, before we started our mission on the table, that holographic map that you displayed a while back. Yes. Does my character know his way around now, or am I still wandering? Uh, he knows the general layout, but he doesn't really know his way around yet also uh henry did you say that you were joining yashua on his walk last time yeah i was joining him we went oh. out the door together okay oh you two are walking and talking amongst yourselves Yeah, I my my whole my whole plan was to actually find a, uh, a like a utility store or like a weapon shop so I could buy more ammunition types. Okay. I'll tag around. Maybe I could find some scrolls spell that could be handy. Yeah, that's important too. Yes. Especially a healing spell. Now that our buddy's gone. <laughs> Alright. Let's check out this store over here. Went some window shopping. Uh, Have to roll perception, Riku. 
Mm, no, that would be insight. Would we both check? Are you both looking yes. in through the window? Okay. Yes. Right, look at that in just a moment. Okay, so you all peer through the window, just taking a cursory glance, and Yashua, you see three different boxes. Those boxes are red, green, and a sky bluish light color. Henry, you see a few different tomes, some of which appearing to be but a few pages long, uh, others appearing to be the size of a dictionary, a very large dictionary at that. So Henry uh says to Yashua, it looks like there might be some good stuff in here. Yeah, let's check it out. So we head on in. I kick the door down. FBI, open up! No, I'm kidding. The door looks like it's here. Alright, so you enter into the building and the shopkeeper had their back turned, but once they heard the doorbell go off, uh, they turn around and they face you. And for a brief moment, you notice that one of their ears is just the opposite color of the other ear. Almost as if someone applied a, a negative filter to that one ear, one ear only. Uh, can I help you? Uh, yes, uh, what are those, uh, different colored boxes there? And those tomes over there. Uh, the shopkeep cranes their neck to the left, and he goes, oh, uh, the boxes are ammunition for well you know firearms and stuff uh the tomes those are like you know spells and whatnot uh i just got them like yesterday i haven't had any buyers yet it's a bunch of bunch of imported experimental crap um have had a chance to field test it but uh if you got the gill for it, I'll sell it to you. Oh, I like the sound of that. I like that, too. Uh... Okay, oh. Henry goes over and takes a look at the box of tomes. And tries to search for some... something good. What? Which... That would be... Investigation. Investigation. Okay, while well, you do that... Okay, while well, you check out the tomes, I'm gonna purchase these ammo boxes. How much is for a box? And how many, uh... And how many shots do I get out of these boxes? Uh... Each box... Has like... 50 or so rounds in them. Uh... The red ones are... Fire... The green ones... Are poison... And the blue ones are ice. Uh, as for the costs, uh, so the light red ones, those are, those are 500 gill a box. The medium shade red ones, those are 2,000 a box. And the darkest red ones are 5,000 a box. And same with the other two elements. 
So the darker the color, the more powerful the bullet? Yep. Interesting. And Henry, as for your... <gasps> ah, excuse me. <clears throat> as for your investigation role... Please pick a number from... No, between oh. 1 and 7. I'll go 5. I'm gonna dice roll on my phone. Let's find it. Alright. You sift through the tomes and you lay hands on the stop spell and cure one. Stop. He raises the two tomes and asks the shopkeep how much. Uh, the one with the clock, that's, uh, he reaches in his back pocket and pulls out a note. Uh, that's, uh, that's gonna be three grand. And the, the, the one with the leaf, that's six hundred. Can I persuade him to do it cheaper? Um, oh, you're gonna haggle? Roll persuasion. <laughs> yeah. Even though mine is crap all the way up. Here. Oh. That's okay. actually pretty good for my character. <laughs> So, you you offer up a negotiation to lower the price, yes? Yes, no? Yes, to lower the price. Okay. Now, because he beat your roll by four, um, I'm not going to have him say no, but I will have him say... Uh, how much lower are you trying to go? Because I'm willing to discuss this. I'll buy the... It was 2k, right? The stop? It was 3. Okay. But I so can I'll lower take... it into the 2 range. I'll take it 3... Okay, and you throw in the stop, the the cure for free. Hmm. Let's say. Let's say we do. Thirty-two hundred. Thirty-two hundred. That's a deal. All right. Fair enough. Henry puts a bag of. 3200 gil onto the counter for the shopkeep. Alright. Shopkeep takes it, tosses it into the register, and he says, uh, good business. Henry asks also the shopkeep, do you have any secret tomes that you're hiding? Uh, if I, if they were a secret, why would I tell you? Because we're such great friends now. Henry taps his shoulder. <laughs> he eyes your hand. This is the first time you stepped foot in my shop, dude. Dang it. <laughs> However, that doesn't mean I haven't seen you around before. And... That also doesn't mean that I don't know what's been going on since you got here. So, if you're willing to become business partners, we can talk something out. 
but the whole friends thing. Try again later. That sounds fair. <laughs> okay. Can I, I mean, get what? at least the name? <laughs> Yeah, I suppose I should tell you my name, uh, um, it's, it's Cuban. Stop, keep Cuban. <laughs> yep. Meanwhile, Yashua is like, has his arms folded, and he's just glaring at the boxes, trying to come up with a decision. If you stare any harder, you'll wind up setting them off. I take it you're really into your gunmanship and ammo selection? Yeah, you could say that. Uh, he doesn't make eye contact, he's just focused. And just sighs. Alright, I'll take one of each element. Okay. Uh, the darker boxes. Ah, uh, all right. Um, he rings you up. That's gonna be uh, give me six, six grand, buddy. Okay, so I'm getting. Paying six grand for how many ammo, ammo boxes? Uh, three boxes, and getting 150 rounds in total. Alright. And because you chose the darkest of the colored boxes, you have 50 rounds of Fire 3, 50 rounds of Ice 3, and 50 rounds of poison three. Okay. How often do you get these boxes? Uh, well, it's not just the, the boxes. Um, the better question is, how often do I get imports? And the answer to that is once every three weeks. Okay. Every three weeks. Oh, uh, in that case, I'm buying your whole stock. Excuse so, me? So, I'm buying all of your ammo. Like, all of it. Yes, all of it. Yashua materializes a bag of gill. Like a big bag of gill. He looks at the bag of gill, back to you, back to the gill, back to you, and he says, uh, what the fu- You know what? I'm not even gonna bother ringing you up. Um, just, just give me 16 grand and we'll be good. Another thing. You wouldn't mind giving me your contact information, yeah? Because I'm going to need a supplier for ammunition. Uh, yeah. Um, he... Scribbles down uh, his contact information, and when you are handed the paper, Yashua, you see a name written on it, and you've heard this name before, but the name on the paper reads as Michael. And please, Wait, please he roll, lied to me. <laughs> please roll history. 
No, no, he didn't lie to you, Henry. Uh, Yashua asked for his supplier. Uh, upon reading the name Michael, you remember that the last time you spoke to Gregory, he mentioned to you that uh, the person he sends people to for commissions is in Starla City. You also remember that he gave you a special coin to show to Michael uh, when you make contact with him. So this is Michael, or that's just the name of the supplier I have to go meet soon? That's the name of the supplier you gotta go meet. Okay. One thing before leaving. Can I investigate that dictionary size tome? Uh, yes. Okay. So, you checked the large dictionary sized tome, and most of the contents in it are illegible and very difficult to understand. However, you do see a particular formula that stands out to you. You don't know what this formula exactly means, but you have a sneaking suspicion that whatever this tome contains, it's something crazy. So, uh, Can I ask the shopkeep man. where he got the dictionary from? Yeah. Hey, Cuban. Huh? Where did you get this? Oh, that's, uh... Damn. I forgot I put that in there. Um, that's something that my old man's old man gave me. And he told me I could sell it, but only under the right conditions. So, I've never read the damn thing, because I can't read it. Uh, I don't exactly... I didn't exactly get what he meant by the right conditions. But, I'm assuming this is when I have to use that special scope that he gave me. Uh, if you don't mind, could you just hold the book in your hands for a moment? Henry tries to hold it, but it's so heavy. He's holding it with all his strength. Right. And uh, Cuban reaches under the desk. He pulls out a pair of glasses, but one of the lenses, instead of it being a rectangle, it almost looks like a drill and he presses a button on one of the glasses arms and as it begins to spin it makes a very loud whirring noise and a humming noise at the same time and Cuban is very slowly scanning you up and down he said hmm interesting and then you hear a very loud beeping noise. But the beeping noise almost sounds like an error message. Ah, now I get it. So he takes the glass off and he says, Okay, so this, uh, this contraption of mine allows me to directly read uh, a person's the magical, magical capabilities, and once the scan finishes, it gives me a letter grade, and 
I was scanning your compatibility with that tone that you got in your hands, and you came out to a C plus. The tome is an A double plus. Oh jeez. So, oh. based on this, I don't think you meet the conditions my granddad was talking about. So, unfortunately, can't sell it to you. At least not yet, anyway. I'm curious now. <laughs> see, see, I'm I'm also trying to learn magic though i don't know how good i am with magic uh whenever i bought these two tomes from uh from wizard uh he told me i just had to open and study the tome yet as soon as i as soon as i touched the tome i instantly learned magic or how to heal do tomes work that way, or you actually have to study them? Well, uh, sometimes. And he he reaches under the table again, and he grabs a bottle of what appears to be a, a blue liquid and takes a swig. Well, the way magic works, as far as I understand, when a life form that has the capacity to learn and understand magic comes into physical contact with something that contains magic if the two individuals or rather if the one individual has a high enough magical magical capability to where they resonate there are some times where the moment you touch something you'll just essentially absorb the information and be able to use that piece of magic. Um, it is not a common or very frequent occurrence, but when it does happen, uh, and as you explain it, when it does happen, not only do you immediately learn the spell, the spell will also be you also be able to use the spell in a stronger format than normal. So let's say uh, I use myself as an example. Uh, my own personal magic grade is a B minus, and when I started to learn my first fire spell, the moment I touched the scroll that contained it. I knew it immediately and instead of my fireball being the size of uh, um, uh, wait before I continue are you all from here like this dimension and stuff no okay uh, that's a do, suspicious question to do ask you, do you know what baseball is Yes. I don't. What the hell is baseball? Um, long story short, uh, you he, hit a ball with a stick, man. He pulls out a he pulls out a baseball, and he says, "A lot of people on the field, you hit this, you run, you chase it, you throw it around. Simple." But continuing with my explanation, uh, typically, um, starter fire spells are the size of this ball. Mine was double this size. Okay. I understand now. Yeah. And, but now that you've said that, I'm going to take a reading of you now. So the same procedure happens. He scans you over. The glasses make their sounds. And he says, well, I'll be damned. You have a... You have a better magic grade than I do but that's without holding that tome in your hands what magic do you know I just know cure and Asuna hmm. 
I don't have any offensive or defensive magic. Just support. Well, that That's where the difference is. Almost every spell I know is offensive. And given that you only have the two um, supportive type spells, I think just based off of the reading and what you've told me, I think your body might be more accustomed to um, restorative things as compared to just raw destruction like myself and your friend here. Hmm. But, you know, that's just what that's just what this machine told me. And sometimes machines can be wrong, so as far as I know, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But based off the data, it seems like you're more geared toward healing and stuff. I asked Cuban what that is and if we could purchase one. What his his reader with his glasses? Yeah, the reader. Uh, this is something that my mother made. But if I had uh, schematics for them, and if there wasn't a security lock on the glasses themselves, uh, I would gladly replicate them for you. But because she is no longer here and I don't have any blueprints or whatnot, uh, I cannot reproduce or sell them to you. And uh, I'm pretty sure you all know Z. Uh, he's tried to crack the code on him before and no dice so far. But I'm pretty sure that when he does, uh, they'll probably be mass produced within a year or so. unfortunate yeah anyways here's the gill just drops a whole bag of gill on the counter <laughs> and the gill makes a very loud <laughs> and he's like yo almost forgot about that uh thanks for the business appreciate it and oh not at all thank you now I have to put up a sign that says out of ammunition, or out of imported ammunition anyway. Uh, give me a moment while I go look for that thing. And he goes into the back of the shop and looks for his sign. Henry screams out, let us know anytime you got stuff for us. He shouts back, will do. And Henry hops out of the store happy with two new spells. For that, does he have any other support spells? Uh, you can do investigation and look. I. that in just a moment uh, let's see here okay um pick a number between one and six Four. All right. I'm gonna run my dice roll on my phone. All right. Uh, with that investigation roll of yours, you find a scroll. <coughs> you find a scroll containing the float spell. lets you levitate right yep it allows you to 
Uh, you float above the ground and you are immune to ground traps for 3d4 turns. Can you hmm. use it to fly? No. Or is it just light hovering across places? Yep, you just you lightly hover above the ground. You can still walk normally, but no flight. Eh. It's good against traps. Ground traps. Not aerial hmm. traps. So can I use my tomes outside? Don't cause a public disturbance. Learn. Learn uh, them. Yes, yeah, so for the... So to learn, stop. I'm going yep. to ask you to roll a 2d10. So, slash... Twenty. Bing. <laughs> nice. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Damn. All right. So. Unstoppable step, stop. You step outside. You open the first page of the stop tome. You immediately learn its contents. And now I will have you roll a one d ten. Of course, it would come with a very low. Okay. So, for your boosted version of stop, uh, instead of it being take away one action from the enemy for 3d4 turns, uh, yours is you take away one action from the enemy for 3d6 turns. So, take away... One action for 3D turns. Let me just read that. This is just for my knowledge, putting it in the chat. Alright. And the cure spell? Uh, your cure spell. That will be a 1d10 roll. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, roll another 1d10. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. So, you and Yashua both have the same version of Cure. So, instead of it being um, 25 plus max MP divided by 2, it will be 35 plus max MP divided by 2. And I will uh, reference Rick's real fast. Right. So, I'll punch it in for you so you can see what it's supposed to look like. Five. I already put my mana there. How much is your max? 1260? 1260, which would be 630. Half of it. That. Stop, I'm confused about entirely. So. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Good. Me. Roll Yashua, just to make sure that it is right. Yeah, I have more int than him, for yeah. sure. I just want to make sure uh, I punched everything correctly. Uh, as for stop, um, that one, you just hit the button, and uh, I will put that against the enemy's debuff resist, and if they fail, then they're affected by it. If they that pass, would be like a treat. yeah. All right, I'll purchase the float spell. Why not? Never know when I'm gonna need it. You never know if you hit a ten. Right. Be 
learn it. No, cause we we've, we've came across trap land traps before. I want to go. Can he that cast again. it on other people float? Yes. Ooh. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll buy this scroll. Huh? How much for this float scroll? Uh, that's gonna be eight hundred gil. Well, since I kindly purchase your entire stock, you think you could cut me a deal for the float spell? Hmm. Got a point there. Six hundred. All right, six hundred it is. All right. He just materializes a smaller bag and just tosses it at him, like a light toss. Yep. Henry walks back into the store <laughs> and asks Cuban, "Are you interested in buying any items?" Um. What are you trying to sell me? No, are you looking for anything yourself? Oh. Preferably? Uh. I mean. I'll get. I get so much crap on the regular that. Uh. I kind of. Don't. These days. Um. And I haven't really. Had anything in particular that I wanted. Uh, I don't know. If I uh, think of something, I'll let you know. Hey. That is a that's a damn good question, though. Well, we exchange contacts, so in case you have something of interest, you could let me know. Agreed. Now, let's open up this scroll. Outside. <laughs> we don't want to blow up this shop. <laughs> Relax, it's only a float spell. It's not like I'm going to smash against the ceiling. I want you to hit that one. I <laughs> look at him, right? Uh, nah, you'll, you'll be alright. Okay, okay, so to read and learn the float spell, please roll a 1d14. Slash R, right? Yep. 1d14. Oh. Slash R space. 1d14. Ugh. Okay. It is going to take you six minutes to read and learn the spell to completion. Cool. Uh, I already have how the time is going to play out, so I will let you know when uh, time's up. All right. Do I have to roll for the uh, additional effects, or no? That's it. That's uh, when you learn it. Nope. Right. Nope. You only get to roll the bonus effects if you get a crit success. Okay. Fair. All right. All right. Rick, you want some of my tens? <laughs> no, you could keep them. Sounds contagious. It disease. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the supplies. I'll catch you later. Yep, I'll uh, I'll see y'all around. Shit, I'll probably see y'all soon. With how much shit you all just bought. <laughs> you better have more in stock next time. <laughs> uh, I'll think about it. Ah, ignore him. Though, though you could do you could do me a solid, and if you if you could get some explosives, they'll be much appreciated. I. You. Did you? Missed the part where I said the red ones were fire bullets, and you just bought all of them. 
bought a box full of explosives. <laughs> yeah, but I need. I also need grenades. Oh. Oh. These are for long range engagements. I'm gonna need something to deal with a crowd. I don't have that. So you're just trying to raise hell, huh? No, I'm trying to be efficient. Uh, good enough. Raise hell. How hell do you take me for? <laughs> if, hey. if, if anything, you have to worry about this guy raising hell as he points at Henry. Henry's just there playing with a little fireball in his head. <laughs> what? You know what? I believe you. <laughs> All right, well, if uh, if business is done, uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, as this is the shop after all. But this is our second home. <laughs> Joshua just sighs. Anyways, we'll be on our way. You take care. Uh, you too. Hi, Cubit. Goodbye, Henry. <laughs> that, the, the way he said Henry, like, disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, we want to leave the shop. And yep. as you are determining you know, which way to go next, uh, you hear something of distress in the distance uh, please roll perception oh boy both of us are yes okay. perception. okay so Upon hearing what sounds like someone is being bothered, I'll put it like that, uh, you check the area, and it's not anywhere too close by, but once you hear it again, you immediately know the direction of which it is coming from. And... Please place your tokens on the other side of the street. Right here. Alright. So, once you cross the street and you look to the other side, uh, you happen to see a familiar face that is unfortunately being haggled by, by some people who have no business doing what they are doing. Yes, she was size. Didn't we tell her to stay out of trouble? Well, let's go see who her new friends are, shall we? I forgot her name. <laughs> uh, before you make your way over, uh, you have to wait for the cars to. Uh, obey the draft clause. So you're gonna be. Can I just fly over the fucking street? I mean, there's a pretty big truck uh, coming down the street right now. So if you want to take that risk, go for it. Henry has to stop <laughs> on the truck. Dude, Guys, just cast it. Just, <laughs> just cast stop the entire street. The whole street. Let's go. <laughs> I got the traffic. You get the girl. <laughs> Oh my god. Are we really doing this? Okay. So, based off of that, uh, Henry cast stop on the oncoming traffic. You have... What's... What, what, is, what is this? Hang on. This guy, if this guy caused a traffic accident, I'm gonna fucking laugh. <laughs> You have 39 seconds to cross the street. I need you to roll acrobatics and dexterity. Why? I could just fly over. 
Yeah, but acrobatics. Alright, let's see. Uh, acrobatics and dexterity, he said? Yep. Because when when Henry casts his stop on the oncoming traffic, uh, there are quite a few vehicles that, if they were going regular speed, by the time you got high enough in the air, you would have been hit. Oh, that was almost a 20. Oh, wait. The wrong one. There you go. Okay. So, with the paused traffic, you take a moment to prep yourself, and you manage to spectacularly leap over most of the tall vehicles, and for the one that you just barely cleared, uh, your f the tip of your foot just so lightly grazes it, but you manage to stick the landing, and you are now over here. The other side? Yes. Okay. So that was Yashua's action. Uh, Henry, how do you wish to cross the street if you wish to do so? Can I grappling hook him and just pull him across? Uh, that is going to be a... Hmm. That's going to be a strength roll and athletics. And what am I going to have to do to land it? <laughs> uh, you are going to have to roll acrobatics. Strength. You're going to throw me right into these guys, are you? Uh, <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> well. Strength and athletics. Okay. So. You got a one minute for well, you. Apple, you send I, I, forth your grappling hook. It latches onto Henry's leg, and you pull him over with most of your strength. Try not to go overboard. And as you disengage the hook, you tell him, "Try to land." He hears it a bit too late and smacks down on the ground face first. I wanted to throw him at them at least since he fucked up his roll. Uh, no, if if you had wound up uh, screwing up the roll, I would have had you throw him into one of the uh, hagglers. But uh, as a result of that unfortunate athletics roll, uh, Henry, you will lose 5 HP. Ow. And as time resumes um jet looks over to you all and she's like what are you all doing here as the ones who are bothering her look at you all in uh genuine confusion before they attempt to resume uh giving jet problems well i was in the neighborhood and i just happened to spot you and I just wanted to say hello. Are these friends of yours? Harry just says. <laughs> um, no, they are not friends of mine. They've been bothering me all night, and they won't leave me alone. Is that right, gentlemen? Would you be kind enough to leave the lady alone? Listen here, Buster. This has nothing to do with you. Back off. <laughs> uh, you're still getting up from the ground. Well, I'm not very good at persuasion as he m materializes his revolvers. Pretty please? And the moment you do that, the one with the bat swings their bat at your hands. And the moment you grip them, they go flying out. Huh. 
Can I roll to catch his bat? Sure. Um, what do I have to roll for that? Strength? Please Athletic. roll sleight of hand. Oh. While he's doing that, can I roll for recovering off the ground? Uh, yeah. Uh, roll a 1d8 to spring off the ground and onto your feet. Nice. Damn, way to go. Alright, so you spring onto your feet, and you do so in a motion that is so high that uh, you wind up kicking no you see you you spring onto your feet but you did so in a manner that propelled you forward so you more or less uh, drop kick the one with the knives right in front of you and you knock him back about wrong person you knock him back about five feet so he's here now, Yashua, you caught the bat. What are you going to do with your free hand? Mm. Well, since I caught the bat, I want to, like, raw strength to, like, just with grip strength, just destroy it. Or damage it. Break or just yank it off his hand. Break his knee. So you are attempting to disarm them, yes? Disarm them, but depending on the roll, we'll see what I do. Okay. But... What about your empty hand? I'll leave it empty for now. Okay. Uh, roll strength. Oh, <laughs> that is shattered. <laughs> so, uh, with the hand that is holding the bat, you grip it so damn hard that not only does the portion that you hold break, the intensity of the grip causes such a strong vibration that the rest of the bat falls to pieces. And then, uh, for a very brief moment, you have a bout of inspiration. And then, that feeling from when you consumed the black lotus flower returned, but it didn't cause you any pain. It instead, damn near, overloaded you with inspiration and strength and you feel a force in your empty hand and before you realize it you wind up driving your palm into the center of their chest and they collide into the traffic sign So their back collided with the traffic sign and you look at your hand and you see your hand glowing and then when you just as a curious uh, you clench your fist and you feel a rush of knowledge from Many different martial artists over the years just flow into your mind. And you have now genuinely unlocked your Tifa subclass. And I just want to say you got very lucky with that uh, strength roll.
It wasn't luck, it was fate. <laughs> This was all planned. Alright. Now any volunteers? As he uh signals him to come at him with his hand. His open hand. Uh, the one with the rapier in their hand uh looks at you looks at their ill-fated um, pal in a very strong quotation marks looks back at you and they swing their weapon uh, please roll sleight of hand to catch their blade gonna poke a hole in my hand what happens once is not gonna happen twice here okay so they swing the weapon in such a wild manner that just as it was about to hit jet on its course to hit you uh, you step forward for a moment and you Catch their sword. And now, while that is happening, Henry, what is it that you wish to do? I want to cast stop on everybody. Uh, stop <laughs> is a single target ability. Why can't I cast it multiple times? Uh, if you got the MP for it, yeah. Yes, I got a ton of MP. <laughs> okay, now stop doesn't outright prevent them from moving. It just... I know, it's not one action. Okay. So there's three of them, I want to use it three times. So, one, D, three, each one. So, starting with Mr. KO'd guy in the red hat. Flash R. Copy that, because I have to do it three times. So, that's the first one. Uh, Mr. Red Hat. Stop is a... Your stop is a 3d6, not a 1d3. Oh, 3d6. That's even better. Alright, this Mr. enemy Red has guy. minus one action. Okay, now for Mr. Rapier. Okay, minus one action. And Mr. Dagger's next to me. Okay. And when you cast your stomp spells, the one with the knives shouts, uh, Hey, careful, he has time magic. And the, uh, the, red, the red-haired one picks himself up off the ground, but is holding their back as they got hit pretty damn hard. Harder than what they were expecting to be hit. And they reach for their bat that is in pieces on the ground and they are attempting to flee the bat they are attempting to flee the scene hmm I have I caught a sword on one hand. Is my other hand free? Yes. Okay. I'm going to shoot him in the back if he tries to run. Actually, no. That's me. I'm going to shoot him in the leg. When did you recollect your guns? 
It's simple. I could just rematerialize them. You didn't announce that out loud, though. The benefits of having a digitizer, though it takes actions. Yeah, but you never said you did those actions. Hmm. Can I rip the rapier off this guy's hand and toss it at him then? Yes. Or a red hat guy. <laughs> uh, if you're gonna do that though, that's going to be uh, two strength rolls. This is probably gonna hurt my hand since I'm literally grabbing the blade. Oh, these are strength saves. Okay. So, you pull his rapier hard enough that you snatch it right out of his hands, and then in the same fluid motion, you throw it at the redhead one as if it is a saw blade, and it hits the back of their leg. Uh, it does not impale them, but you threw it so hard that it somehow came flying back to you as if it was a boomerang. The red-haired adversary is currently face first on the ground from the impact. Uh, the rat-like creature is weaponless. You are holding a rapier. Uh, Jet is in bewilderment at what is taking place. And the uh, knife wielding adversary by Henry is just confused. Now, is, you got three actions left. I'll take an action to call back my revolvers. Alright. You are now in possession of your guns again. This guy. Okay. So, he walks up to him. You know how he's holding on to the rapier? He flips it to the tip of the blade. So, like, he's he's holding on to the rapier from the tip of the blade. And he's just gonna, like, swing it at this guy's head. Like a hammer hitting a nail. <laughs> from the hilt. Okay. Strength throw? Uh. Slide of hand. Alright. Alright, so. You perform that action, and you miraculously do not prick yourself with the tip of the blade, and you bring it down on him, and you hit him in just the right spot that he immediately falls unconscious. So this and guy is down for the count. I'll just move him right here. Yashua just uh, says this to the guy when, after hammering him with the hilt of the weapon, thank you for sharing. <laughs> He tosses the blade at Jet. Arm yourself. Uh. Oh, okay. She follows your orders and picks up the weapon. Two actions left. One. One. Yep. All right. There's a new skill I want to test out. All right. 
You with the spiky hair, what should I do to you? I'm saying this in character. Uh, you should probably let me leave if I apologize. Yeah. Hmm. No. <laughs> Well, I'll give you some options. Fight back and die. You drop your knives and we could talk about what you were doing. What's it gonna be? Well, um, both those options are gonna result in me dead. So, uh, let's agree to disagree, and I get the fuck out of here. And as he says that, he drops, he drops his knife, one of the knives, and when it hits the ground, it erupts into a puff of smoke. Mm. Can I shoot a grappling hook quickly? Uh, You're gonna grapple his leg and drag no, him back? His body. I want him straight to my hand. <laughs> Alright, Scorpion. Uh, roll perception to see, if, to see if you see him through the smoke first. Alright, um, activate your grappling hook and do strength. This one? I oh, know that's saving. Alright, you grab what? him and you pull him straight to you, right outside the smoke. You're holding him by the shirt or the neck. I, for, I forgot what you said, or I forgot how you said you can be grabbing and pulling him. I have him right, me. like, I'm holding him now with my hand on his chest area. Okay, so, so you are grabbing by the shirt, yeah? Yeah. Alright. Can I cast Spark? Um, well, it is my turn still. Yeah, it, it's still. Uh, Yashua's turn, you just prevented dude from running away. Hey, Yashua, do your best. Well, if you're volunteering to pull bullets in you, then who am I to say no? I'm not that mean. This guy's knocked out, right? Uh, this one is. That one could still run away. Get him. Yeah, th this one is uh, on the Recovery. ground, face first. But they, from the first hit, and then when you threw the rapier at him, they're hurt pretty bad. So they aren't gonna, they aren't gonna try to run away. And he slow. He has a stop on him too. He's kind of fucked. <laughs> All right, redhead, you stay there. If you move, I don't have to tell you what's gonna happen to you. You have an idea. Okay. Now, what should we do with you? You know what Henry likes to do to hostages. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Oh well, if we fry him, he gets fried. You see Henry's hand starting to spark up a little bit? <laughs> Can I grab him by the leg and just slam Wait, him against his friend over here? <laughs> uh, to get two KOs? The both of you can. So we have to do a double strength throw? Yes. Okay. Alright. Henry, 
Let's do you this. grab her from the left leg. I'll <laughs> grab her from the right. If one of us fails, it's gonna be really funny. If we fail, he's gonna get teared in half. <laughs> okay. Ready? Ready. This guy. <laughs> okay. So, uh... I'm sure you all know the image and the meme of I'll beat a motherfucker with another yep. motherfucker. How was the plan? Okay. So, the two of you, you lift the poor bastard up by his leg, you slam him right down onto his friend, and you hear a very loud cracking noise as the both of them are KO'd. And with that, uh, this sudden battle is what we call the done. And due to um, awakening to a new power, <clears throat> Yashua, uh, say hello to the Amok Noise. And I have the music. Wait, wrong one. Right one. Okay, so. You don't just get. You don't get any particular rewards for this, as this was an this was an event fight, and while you did prevent a situation that was already wrong from getting even worse, uh, the payout was um, realizing the hidden potential within you as you unlocked your subclass. Awesome. Can I loot their pockets? See if they have gill. Sure. Uh, investigation roll, please. Do I have to do three investigation rolls? One for each body or just one in general? Uh, if you want to investigate all of them at once, you can do one singular investigation roll, but it's going to have to be pretty high. All right, I'll just do one roll. Uh, I'll give it to you. All right, so awesome. you check all the bodies, or all the pockets, because not they're not dead. <clears throat> you check all the bodies. Damn it! <laughs> you check all the pockets, and uh, you wind up coming across uh, another four thousand gil. What? Is that both of us or just him? Both of you. Okay. But <sighs> there we go. Yashua says to the bodies, "Thanks for your patronage." As he takes the girl. <laughs> and to rack up the body counts. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Anyways, Fine. Jet, care to explain? <sighs> okay. So, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just, I was making a mother run to go get some more medicine and some food as I was heading back to, um, my, the only other place that I feel safe aside from my home and I saw an old friend in one of the nearby clubs and I I poked my head inside just to say hi and then these gross bastards kept following me and were pestering me and they wouldn't leave me alone and when they started to appear as if they were going to put their hands on me, that's when I started screaming. 
So you don't have any idea why they were following you? Well, I can think of one, but I don't want to think about that one reason. Because, um, well, when we met for the first time, um, remember when I told you that I wound up getting involved in some business that I didn't want to be in, but I didn't have a choice because I needed the money. Yes. Uh, the only option that I can think of, outside of them being just scumbags, was uh, <clears throat> there and my old and one-time employer decided that I wasn't done and wanted to drag me back. I see. Do you mind giving me a name of this employer? Um, she looks around just to make sure that Yashua puts no up his hand so she doesn't speak it out loud because I, I, I was going to suggest you know write it down on a paper and uh, to that she she nods and she mouths herself saying uh She'll write it down for you when they're not in public. <clears throat> in the meantime, we should get you to Frankie's. Um, you're I most likely going hostage. to get targeted. I want to take a hostage with us. Hmm. I want to take Red Hat, man. See, you could carry I'm him. going. Why exactly do you wish to take them with you? So we can find out more information about who sent them. Exactly. Just in case it's not her old employer. Plus, if it is her old employer, maybe you could find location of where they are currently. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I will allow it. Since Mr. Red Hat Man is, has very bad luck, I want him to come with us. It could cause even more worse luck for him. Okay. Well, you put it like that, that's a... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, cool. Uh, I'm what about the other two? Yashiro's yeah, not gonna carry any body, so he suggests you should call... You should call Z then. Tell him to pick us up. Henry communicates to Z to come grab this guy. We need him for information. If he's not busy. Uh, hmm. Alright. Uh, Zero. He picked up the phone. And he answers. Says, what do you want? I'm trying to sleep. Before the mission. Here, old man. What the fuck do you want, Henry? We got a guy that we need some information from. What, what kind of guy? Did you find um, one of the cultists one of the while you were out? Kind. <laughs> oh, so just some trash off the street. <laughs> Yashua chuckles. <sighs> I'll send someone to come get you all. I'm going back to sleep. With that, Zero hangs up. And within about 10 or so minutes, uh, 
a vehicle arrives. It is a woman with blue tinted sunglasses. And she just lets the windows down. And she looks at you all, looks at the situation, and she says, uh, get in. And Yashua, as that uh, whole ordeal was taking place, uh, you have successfully learned the float, <clears throat> the float spell. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awesome. Now we don't have to carry bodies. <laughs> I mean, just use your gravity ring. He doesn't have one. All right. Laughs at you. Yeah, you have one. And he just gets the quarter cries. <laughs> all right, so you all, all right. go back. <clears throat> I use the gravity ring to make these bodies weight nothing, and I just toss them in the fucking trunk. All right. Do we really want to bring the rat with us? The rat? Oh, that thing. <laughs> I think he should be crisp. You're really that hungry? You're a cannibal, you know that? No, you don't bring animals back to the cafe. <laughs> the bar would stink up and it would give Frenchies a bad name. <laughs> Y'all show it just sighs and just ignores the comment. Anyways, let's go. Okay. So. You go pile in. You make way back to Francesca's place. And when you uh, enter into the office space, the scene before you is uh, incredibly confusing. And for a moment, you feel that something went incredibly wrong while you all were gone. Because the sight that you see is both Cynthia and Dreva holding Lion into the air by his neck. Oh! Uh oh, uh -oh traitor! Traitor! <laughs> Hey guys, what, uh... What did we miss? You guys are having a party without us? What happened here? The only thing that you missed, and as Dreva is saying this, uh, you can see her eyes doing her usual threatening glow effect, and she continues. What you missed was this son of a bitch feeding information to the enemy. And we caught him red handed because Cynthia was showing me how some of the technology here worked. And she picked up an unusual reading of the communications line. And when we tracked it back, it led right to him. And, um... You caught us in a moment of... Figuring out how exactly to deal with this. Easy. And I am quite, quite angry. And as you say that, you can see Draver's grip tighten around his neck. And you can see veins coming out of her hand. As Cynthia is... Uh, also, reciprocating that same grip strength.
Well, if we end up breaking his neck, we're not going to learn anything, are we? Well, you do have a point. You could break his neck later. Let's let's see what he could tell us. I like the answer. Fire! <laughs> uh, please roll persuasion. I have to roll persuasion. All right. Yes. You want to persuade him? I want to kill his ass. I'm not persuading him. I'm persuading Drevo not to kill him. <sighs> Fine. But make it quick. As she looks over to Cynthia and they both nod to each other. They loosen their grip, but they also throw him onto the floor uh, as their grips loosen up. I wish I could place tokens in between grids, but I'm just to sell with that for now. Well, I like that in front of me. <laughs> oh, well, wait, actually, uh, can I? I'll persuade him easily to talk. <laughs> no, that, that's too big. Uh, whatever. Um, for location's sake, he is just positioned uh, before the both of you, yes. And while he is on the ground, uh, Driv has the bladed section of her staff pointed at him, and Cynthia has her rifle pointed at the back of his head. Henry, could you stand behind him and uh, grab his legs? And if he doesn't talk, you know, burn him a little bit. Be zappy. <laughs> yeah, zap zap. Okay, just put him in between me and Joshua. There, that's good. Uh, with the scene being what it is now, uh, Roselia will step forward, and the markings on her arm will glow a very, very slight shade of pink, and you can see uh, runes appear around Lion's body. So he is not only surrounded and being pinned down, he is completely immobilized, save for his ability to speak and breathe, obviously. Mm. Well, Lion, I'm not a big fan of torture. I just, I just like to execute because it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So start explaining yourself, or else these ladies, ooh, they look real vicious right now. I'm afraid I'll, I won't be able to stop them. In response, he, and I mean this in the most literal sense possible, he spits at your shoes, not on your shoes, at your shoes. And... Henry grabs him by the back of his hair and says, Bad mistake, and casts a uh, earth spike into his left leg. Okay. Uh, uh, he. He winces from the pain, and the only thing that he says in response to that is I never really I never liked you guys anyway and you all were more or less in my way and I was acting as a double agent so that not only could I double cross you 
I double cross them and take over everything for myself. Yasra just laughs, well that's rich. Next question. <laughs> Yasra just sighs. We're wasting our time here. Ladies, you could tear them up. And with that being said, uh, as you step to the side, before you can even make it to the wall, you can hear Dreyfa swinging the bladed side of her staff so much so that you can hear the air whistle with every swing. Ah, uh, she's beating a fucking piñata here. Let's add a little interest to this. With that last spark cast of yours, uh, as the small bolt is uh, traveling through the air and heading towards his body, she she casts uh, Eroga in the room, and she uses Dragon Roar at the same time, but. But, the noise from the Aroga spell masks over the noise of Dragon Roar, so none of you take damage, except Lion. Ah, uh, cancel sound with sound, I see. I'm going to be a jerk. I want this to go on longer. You're going to heal him. I'm going to heal him. <laughs> I, th I cast a bunch though, of heals though I think, <laughs> though, though I think the Iroga and the Dragon Roar did finish him off, though. Yeah, he's he's uh, he, he's finished. But <laughs> okay. Uh, the last thing you hear him say is a name, a simple name, and that name is Urias. And with that. Lion is effectively dead, and his, Burn his, corpse. <laughs> his, his body no, no. fades his body into the ether. Aww. So when his body fades away, does his clothing and items stay behind? Uh, the clothing goes, the items stay. I caught uh, dibs on the sword, his gun blade. Okay. So as Dreva is calming down, she begins to explain um, what was really going on. <sighs> okay. Okay. So here's what happened. As I said, when you all left, I asked Cynthia to really explain to me how the technology here and whatnot works. And because, uh, again, where, where I come from, we didn't have much of anything close to this. So she was showing me all the scripts and all the programs and whatnot, and barely any of it made a lot of sense to me, but for what I did understand, it was a nice learning experience. And as she was showing me everything, I saw something marked in yellow. And I said, hey, what does that mean? And when I pointed out to Cynthia, she says that that meant that a transmission had been intercepted. And the reading said that it was 
very, very close. So I watched her work her magic to trace the source of where it would be coming from. And she uploaded that information to her signal tracker. And we followed it. And we caught Lion in the midst of <clears throat> relaying what he knew of our plan and our mission to one of the priests in the cult. And we cornered him and we pressed him for questions and we, and by we, I mean myself, Cynthia, and Roselia, we gave him no room for escape but he began to fight back under the notion of we were incompetent we weren't cut out for any of this and that we were destined to fail and if we didn't fail of our own accord he was going to be the one to ensure that that would happen as he more or less admitted in that moment that the whole reason that he joined us was to sabotage us, break up uh, our party, and try to kill us. He didn't necessarily say he was working for anyone else aside from his bullshit double double agent crap but uh, that's why when you came in because he was lunging at Cynthia that's why we were holding him up by the neck and if you hadn't come in when you did uh, well, you know what would have happened well were you were you at least able to confiscate his communication device? We could have track and locate this other priest. Uh, we did, thankfully. Uh, Roselia has it. As I told her to just uh, plug it in into the other computer on the other side of the room, and it is currently tracing where the recipient of all that information was. So we'll, we'll find out soon enough. And mm. now we have to, we have to modify our plans because he did, well, he didn't say much. Um, he did detail where all of our teams were going to be going, specifically our team. So now we have to change plans. As now they know that we'll be coming for them. They just don't know which location. Henry collects the rest of the items on the floor and puts them in a bag. Oh, that's unfortunate. Was there anything else useful in those items? Not... Not exactly. Um, I mean, there's his weapon, if, but that, that was... That and his communicator was... The only... Useful things he had. Can I search through the items? Or um, anything else? Uh, for that, I'm going to say no. Because his inventory literally just consisted of his weapon and his gear. I took his weapon too. <laughs> However, uh, in the spot where he began to fade away, you find a, a, a clear emerald shard 
Wait, his summoning spirit. <laughs> you you pick up that emerald shard, and very you carefully. hear yes, yes, very carefully. You hear what sounds like a blade being swung across the air, and a horse let, letting out a mighty neigh. Or, or Odin. <laughs> As both you, well, not not both, you. Yashua, Dreva, and Mel all hear the same noise, but it very quickly fades off. But you feel as if something was imparted to you. <laughs> Henry well, guess... puts it in his chest pocket nearest to his heart, the little crystal, the little emerald. Alright. Well. He wasn't that useless after all. We get a sh inventory. Clear. So what should I name this weapon? Just Gunblade or? Uh, the official name for it was Aether Trigger. Aether Trigger? Oh, that's amazing. I think nice it should name. be called the Traitor's Aether Trigger. <laughs> Traitor Trigger. <laughs> Traitor Trigger. <laughs> Actually... You bring, up, you bring up a good point. Um, please put that in your inventory as Traitor's Aether Trigger. Just his, because he picked it up. Yeah. Alright. They're all here, right? Uh, no, I just didn't take his token off of the map. He is back at his place and he is sleeping. So will there be any further use for the emerald later on? I will neither confirm or deny. Okay. Okay. That's that, that's worth it. You're gonna have to tell me the stats of these of this weapon later on. Oh, you actually want to use it as a weapon? Well, yeah, I could. I could either use it or just sell it or just keep it as a keep sink. I don't know, or just display it on my wall. See this, son? I got this from a trader. Uh, I'll think on that. Or we could give it to somebody else down the line if they join the party and use that class. Yeah, we could. I will think on that. That one be, would be a thing. Really good redemption arc for the weapon. If somebody else joins and they use it. Redeemed. Okay. Need their trigger. Gonna be the redeemer from Warframe. The redeemer. <laughs> uh. So, okay. with that scene having taken place, uh, you can see that Dreva is still is still pretty pretty angry by it. Um, she appears to be shaken up, but you don't really know if she truly is or not. But you can see that, that her arms are folded and her feet is violently tapping the ground. Can Henry try to go in for a hug to calm her down? Like the goof he is? Uh, I dare you. I know I'm going to get hit. <laughs> uh, charisma roll. That's not, okay. Oh god, this could be horrible. Else. I'm expecting wow. him to get sent flying. Oh my god. That was almost perfect. <laughs> yeah, it was almost perfect. Uh... Does she have to roll charisma save to see what she gets? I don't get chopped up in pieces. Oh, uh, looks like you win. No. Yeah. No? Um, she looks at Henry as he approaches. And she says, I'm going to stop wide. you right there. I can tell what you're trying to do. 
I appreciate the gesture. But instead of you hugging me, let's just shake hands and discuss. Or rather, I'm going to vent briefly about how I had to deal with this once, two, three, many times with my old group and how having to deal with that and those memories flooding back to me is making me so incredibly angry. I will be okay. I just, as much as I enjoy trying to give people the benefit of the doubt and trust them if they say they are going to help our cause, it just reminds me that people aren't as good as they claim to be. Yashua just sighs at that last thing she says. Yeah, that's human nature in a nutshell. Henry takes Raven's head and sits down, pouts, and draws circles on the floor. <laughs> he never wants the hug. <laughs> Yashua just pats Henry on the shoulder. Okay, well, Cynthia speaks up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go wake up Chief and let her know what happened. And uh, um, mm. if you feel or hear anything, don't panic. Oh God! All right. Well, Drava. Could you give me a hand with this? Or better yet, do you have any rope? Oh. Uh... Yeah, I've got rope, but what for? Well, when I was going on my walk, Henry decided to tag along. No surprise there. After doing, after doing some purchases, I came across Jet, and she had some new New, uh, company. The kind of company that you don't want to have around. It's a gist. Though I thought instead of just killing them outright, I've incapacitated them and brought them here for further questioning. And as you say that, uh, Jet very sheepishly enters the space and stands uh, on the wall by the door and Drava takes notice of her and she says are you sure it was a good idea bringing her here or rather don't 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 answer that don't answer that you wouldn't have brought her here without a reason Henry runs over to Jet and gives her a hug at least she'll <laughs> give me a hug she very slowly reciprocates. Aww. <laughs> anyway. Was it a complete rejection? <laughs> well, the reason why I brought Jets here is because she's being targeted. Not just that, but uh, Frankie mentioned that she is one of her contacts. Well, uh, I'm not going to argue with you. I don't really have the energy to argue right now, so. As long as she doesn't do anything that would make anyone angry, um, yeah, whatever. Yashua puts a hand on her shoulder. Relax. Go take a seat. 
as I walk to Jet. Okay. She takes a seat at the table. Drava takes a seat at the table. Henry takes a seat at the table. And I take a seat at the table. Rosilia pulls up a chair and sits next to Drava. And as for Cynthia waking up Francesca and telling her what happened, you feel a rumble on the ground. And then you just happen to peer over to the door. And from the underside of the door, you can see uh, lightning crackling and uh, blue light coming from there. As uh, you can tell, that she is very upset. Henry screams, get under the table. <laughs> Uh, looks like they're having a party of their own in there. I don't blame her for feeling that way. It's under the table just in case anything comes fly. <laughs> Anyways. Jet. Care to hand me a name? Okay. So... My one time old employer was someone by the name of Phile, spelled uh, P H Y L I. And Phile. when I did business with that psycho. Um, I needed money for medicine for my family as um, um, they're they're sick and I don't know how much longer they have and he said he could help me get the money if I... well... did what I did when we all first met and when I decided that I valued my life more than whatever money he had for me that was when I... Uh, quit and ran off and since then I have always had eyes on me and I've always had the sneaking suspicion that someone was going to try something and that just happened to ring true today well, it's a good thing that we found you then yeah and as for my other employer uh, it's this weird guy named Mike Hale and um, Harry Joel Salt from the table. Where have we heard that name before? Michael is the contact that I got to get to resupply on ammunition. Are you certain? Yeah, that's the same person. Uh, <sighs> as a hidden shop, um, doesn't really talk much. Uh, handles threats and inconveniences as soon as possible via destruction um, and uh, if you were to put the quality of his commission work next to Zero's regular work um, they are both of the highest of quality neither is better than the other And here, and here I thought I was gonna have a steady supply of ammo. Turns out this guy's gonna be a dick too. 
Well, um, my Kale isn't necessarily a, a jerk. He just takes a while to process information, and because of that, it makes him come off as a jerk. All right, if you say so. It's um. Uh, it's kind of like his ability to process certain information lags behind a bit. Alright, and who did you say the other name was? Philae. The, the, the one who's been bothering me and my family. And Roselia has been paying above average attention to Jet as uh, she was giving her explanation and she asked her when you said they were sick what kind of sick can you give um, an explanation of sorts Um, they, uh, they are in constant pain, um, they've been slowly changing color, um, they can't keep any food down, and as Jet is going to continue, Roselia, uh, pulls up her arm sleeve, and Jet says so they have strange markings on them, just like those. And Rosilia, she puts her arm sleeve back down, and she says. Young lady, I don't know any other way to tell you this, but your family, those afflicted, have been attacked by a cult. And that cult practices incredibly disgusting magic. And otherworldly like activities and if your parents or whoever are in the state that you've just described I'm sorry but they don't have much time left what about Regis wasn't he able to slow down the effects why hasn't he found out about Jet's parent? Uh, one, Regis doesn't know of Jet's existence. And, uh, two, hospitals can be very expensive, and when you don't have money, you don't go to a hospital. He's one of Frenchie's informant. Turns to <laughs> No, she's not an informant she knows of, Frenchie. Fr French you got me saying Frenchie. Francesca. She knows of her, but she doesn't know her. Well, she soon will be. No, <laughs> Okay. Is the crackling still happening in the other room? Uh. Yes, it is. Oh, God. But it is, it is, it is slowing. <clears throat> it is slowing down. By a lot. Waiting for that door to fly off. <laughs> and once the crackling dies down, uh, Jet goes unresponsive as she's trying to process the information that she was just told. As Rosalia speaks up, and she says, uh, There is a 
there is a method to slow down the process, but uh, um, that process, from my understanding, needs to be done early on. Uh, how long have they been like this? Jet replies with, they've been like this for about three weeks now. And even with how pale Roselia is, she somehow becomes paler, and she says that if they don't do something within the next week and a half, it'll be too late. And with the dreadful silence that fills the room. Francesca comes out of her office space, being fully awoken, and you can still see lightning crackling from various places of her body, but she says, I know what happened, I know what's happening, who is this child, we have to revise the plan, or Yes, we have to revise the plan immediately. Yashua just sighs, but you could tell that he's angered, but he has a lot of self-control. Just give me a moment. So Henry goes, plan B? He just leaves the room momentarily. Okay. Francesca says, uh, we won't be resorting to plan B yet, but depending on how quickly everything can be rerouted, um, instead of leading an organized one at a time attack, uh, I might, I might have to use my trump card and initiate an all-out strike that that's only going to be a last resort I need time to think and while I do that she pulls out her phone she calls Zero Regis and Regis's crew and the captain of the task force and she Orders them all to report to her office immediately. And that uh, our scene will transition to Yashua outside of the office, taking a moment to process his anger. Yeah, Yashua has always been the type of character that is always composed. And during when he's alone, that's when you get to see his true colors. So he's seething with anger right now. Let's see. I have an idea. Can we go to the the place, the room where we could just blow up stuff again? I mean a garbage disposal site? Or is that too far away? Uh, that is too far away. Probably Zero doesn't have a secret facility here. Uh, not in the club because he was specifically told in seven different ways that he will not be putting another workshop here. What about close by? <laughs> uh, that is a need-to-know basis. Uh, As Cynthia, she comes out of the office having put everything back to normal with Francesca's uh, electric outburst 
and she says that she may have come up with a method that will not entirely scrap the plan. That will scrap. Well, that will not entirely scrap the original plan. And those two delve back into the office space to discuss that. And we will do a time skip of six hours. Once those six hours go by, <gasps> uh, everyone is in the space. They are discussing the now new plans and they're all of the same consensus that the shit that needs to get done is going to be done and this will mark the beginning of the end of the cult's reign and as the plan is being gone over in excruciating detail this time uh, in the process of all that Jet has been reassured that once this stage of the operation is over Regis will do everything within his power to contain the affliction that Jet's parents are scoring through at the moment and just before you are given the orders to move out. Francesca makes a phone call. And that phone call is made to no other than Angela. Wait. Wait. Is Angela the captain of this, of this private force she mentioned? <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> so... Angela picks up the phone, and the first thing she says is, I am ready and waiting. I hope all of my ever-so-great companions are ready to throw down and cause some shit. And I say that we bring this cult to its knees and in the distance you can hear Ifrida shout at the top of her lungs HELL YEAH! <sighs> Yashra just mutters to himself so it's war then Yep, they fucked with the wrong district director, they fucked with the wrong city, and they fucked with the wrong people. So, you all have your orders, you all have your commands. You all have your instructions, and the only thing that I have left to say is everything will be followed exactly as it had been described in order to ensure that this goes as smoothly as possible with as little life lost as possible 
But there is a chance that innocent lives will be caught up in this. There is a chance that innocents will be hurt. If we can save them, we save them. If not, act accordingly. And now, I have something as a final resort. Zero, if you would. As she steps to the side. Zero presses a hidden switch on the wall, which causes Cynthia to step back as well. And a hatch opens up. And from that hatch, you can see a suit of armor and what appears to be an android rise from the ground as she says the following words Francesca and Zero said the following words <clears throat> as they both hold out their hands and they speak arise from slumber and bring justice to those who bring malice Valkyria Ignite And with that Today's session will end You have 10 seconds to get out your fake sponsorships <laughs> Like the video or Yashiro is gonna throw a rapier at your back Alrighty Tune in next time because she's gonna get crazy. Real crazy.